I have had the privilege to have this coffee grinder on my coffee bar for the past six months. I did a review about six months ago. You can find that, I'll link that up here. I personally thought it was one of the best grinders on the market for the price for the home barista. But now I've had it for six months and there are things I love about it, things I don't love about it. Now, before I go any further, I wanna say I'm going to be giving away a Niche Zero grinder. I have partnered with Niche to raise some money for charity, a charity called Water Aid, because we believe that clean water should be accessible to all people. And within coffee, there's nothing more important than good water. Coffee is 98% water. And we believe that this is an organization that is bringing change to the world, especially in this COVID-19 season when washing stations are so needed across the world. And so all the details for that can be found down below. If you donate for the next little bit, you'll be able to enter into that giveaway and win yourself a niche zero. But what are my thoughts on this grinder after using it for six months? Is it a good grinder? And is it a good grinder for somebody who wants one grinder for both espresso and filter? And this, just talking to people on my Instagram account, if you don't yet follow me, hit me up over there. That's where most of my activity happens. A lot of people have been asking, Kyle, is this a good grinder for me? Is this a good grinder if I wanna do espresso and really dial in a good shot? I don't wanna just get by an espresso. I wanna pull really good cafe quality espresso, but also wanna be able to pull filter coffee as well. Before owning the Niche Zero, I personally own the Eureka Specialita, which is a great little flat burr 55 millimeter grinder, but it didn't do espresso and filter well. It could do both, but to dial it in every single time was a nightmare. It wasn't realistic. And for my workflow, it just didn't work. So I used to have a Barazza Encore beside my Specialita. And for me, that ended up working well. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm always in the mindset that I'd rather buy once, cry once, and not have to buy multiple times. And I ended up having to buy multiple. But the reality is, this is one of the best coffee grinders on the market for the home barista. So what do I love about it? First of all, the fact that it's low retention is incredible. This grinder does its job well. It does what it's supposed to do. This grinder truly is a low retention grinder. And I love it for that because especially when you're swapping between filter and espresso, you want something that won't be holding onto the grounds of your previous brew method. But it does have retention and I went over this in my review. Often what I'll have to do when I'm done grinding espresso or filter and swapping brew methods will give a little tap on the lid and that kind of knocks out any of the grounds. I've even seen some people tapping on the chute itself, but there are different ways to make sure the grounds are all out. Is it zero retention? No, but it's pretty close. And honestly, for the price, I don't think you're gonna beat this grinder for the retention that it holds. And it's one of the biggest factors in having a grinder swapping between two methods is low retention more than anything else. Even more so than even the grind quality, which you might debate me on that, but I personally think if it's got retention, that's just a nightmare. You gotta purge so much coffee, you have to waste so much coffee, which nobody wants to do. It's expensive and it's wasteful. So the Niche Zero is really great for that. To dial it in is a dream. I mean, it does have the, the numbers one to 50 on the grinder itself. And while I've had to find myself going over 50 for certain brew methods for filter, it's very rare. And I don't brew things like Chemex or big batch brews very often. So it's not an issue for me. But if you are somebody who likes to brew eight to 10 cups of coffee at a time in a batch brew, uh, there, this might not be the best option for you. I'll just straight up and say it. Will it do the job? Absolutely. You might have to put some markers on the outside of the numbers so that you can track where you've been grinding just because it doesn't actually have the markers. A few other things that I love about this grinder, I do love the 58 millimeter basket on this. It's very, very convenient to use for espresso and filter. Having a catch bin for filter is always nice. I can dump that right into a pour over and I fit this right into a pour to filter as well. Really, really well done niche. Uh, the build quality is superb, it's, it's solid metal and it's going to last a long time. The paint has never given me any issues. I do have the white model, there's a black model as well. The wood is holding up very well. I don't see any signs of aging. Now that leads me to some things that I don't love about this grinder and that's the fact of the lack of wood options. I've reached out to Niche about this and we've had some great conversations and it really is a manufacturer's nightmare to do that. I've mentioned this also in my, my Elite Bianca review, which I'll link up above. There are woodworkers out there that are creating specific woods for the Niche and I love that. I wanna continue seeing that. I think it's a cool community, but it would be nice to be able to get this right from the factory. The other reality with the Niche is these aren't the easiest machines to get at times. 
times. I've talked to many people who want to buy this machine and I'm always linking them to Indiegogo. Uh, they are a smaller company. It's a father-son company out of the UK. Really, these things are not a big deal. If you want this grinder, you're going to get it. You'll wait an extra few months and it's never been more than that. But what I want to do today is I want to actually brew both filter and espresso and swap between the two in this video to show you that it is possible. So I want to brew filter first. So I have, I have my fellow stag x that i'm going to brew on it's a pour over brewer from uh, fellow products but i'm going to brew this real quick so i'm going to get some coffee and this is one of the things i love about the niche this dosing cup is so great i know it's a dosing cup but oh it's just so great i love it so much i'm going to grind through 20 grams of this coffee and uh we're going to brew it and then i'm going to swap to espresso I found anywhere from 25 all the way up to 50 for filter coffee is good. I know it's a wide range, but it really comes down to how old your coffee is, how lightly roasted it is, the processing, the altitude, the density of the bean. Okay, so I've got my coffee here. I'm gonna brew this real quick. Alrighty, this is done. So now I'm just going to grab a cup. The thing that I find with the Niche Zero Grinder, it, because it does have 63 millimeter conical burrs, I find it's great for both espresso and filter. Uh, now, that being said, I am a fan of flat burrs. I might even prefer them over the conicals, but they are large conicals, and so I haven't found this to be a huge issue. These do taste different than a flat burr grinder. By how much, that's up to you to decide. For me, it isn't a big difference. And some people might actually prefer the taste of the conical. Would I say this is a reason not to buy the niche? Absolutely not. Okay, so I'm gonna leave my coffee here aside and now we're gonna brew some espresso. Again, I just ground this at a fairly medium coarse grind. We're gonna swap right to espresso. I'm gonna show you my workflow and how I do that. What I'll often do before I do anything, before I weigh out my beans, is I'll throw the dosing cup right back in the grinder and I'll tap this a few times. Now you can see, there are a few grinds in there. They kind of stuck to the bottom of that dosing cup. 0.1 grams of coffee. If, if this isn't dumped out, it will affect your espresso shot. That's just my experience. So I would recommend if you're swapping from filter espresso, always knock this out. Vice versa, probably not as big of an issue. It will create some fines in your filter brew, but I think this is a bigger issue from swapping from filter to espresso. Okay, let's swap to espresso. I do have the Bianca behind me, but I actually want to use something that you might be using at home or maybe something that's a little bit more budget friendly. And that is the Flare. This is a Flare manual espresso machine. It's the Flare Pro 2. And I'm going to do a review on this soon because this is a great machine that Flare sent to me to uh, take a look at. And I am so impressed by this little thing. And this is fairly budget friendly for somebody who wants to get into espresso. Now, on my Bianca, I know this is dialed into around an 18. The flare I found has to be a slightly coarser grind. So I'm gonna try a 21 here. So I'm gonna grind this. And like I said, I tapped all that coffee out. There's nothing left in here. And with the flare, the flare actually comes with a pressure gauge to kind of let you know how much pressure you're applying here. This grind is looking pretty good. Maybe on the fine side here. Yeah, that's a little too fine. Okay, so way too fine. But that just goes to show, even from going from filter to espresso, it didn't make the grind too coarse. It was easy to adjust, and it just goes to show how little retention is in this grinder. I actually needed to grind coarser for this espresso, so I probably should have done a 23 instead of a 21, and uh, that's something I'll do for next time. So that's the Niche Zero. Two different brew methods, back to back. It can do it, no issue. If that was your question, if that was holding you back from buying this grinder, it shouldn't. This is a grinder that can be a one grinder fits all grinder. It's incredible for espresso. It's very good for filter. Highly recommend. Again, if you want to win a Niche Zero, I'm doing a giveaway. All the details are down below. We're raising some money for charity, Niche and I, and we want somebody to win this grinder, but we also want to bless a lot of people and help them in this time of COVID-19.
If you're not yet, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. If not yet, follow me at Brew at Home blog on Instagram. You'll find me on there almost daily talking to a lot of people about coffee. In the meantime, if you have any questions, hit them down below. I'll be sure to respond to them. And in the meantime, continue to brew great coffee and continue to brew at home.